A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. Hello everyone, it's Perspicuous87, and I am excited to talk to you about one of my new all-time favorite games from one of my all-time favorite indie development teams, and that game is called What Remains of Edith Finch. It just released today, April 25th, 2017, and is brought to us by Giant Sparrow, the creative minds behind The Unfinished Swan, and also Annapurna Interactive, so we have a lot to look forward to. What Remains of Edith Finch is a collection of devastating, yet masterfully told short stories that come together to give players a glimpse into over a century worth of tragic history belonging to the infamously cursed Finch family. The Finch family, originally of Norwegian descent, is comprised of a large and eccentric group of individuals, each with their own unique personalities, aspirations, joys, sorrows, hobbies, and tales of their own untimely deaths. The story begins with Edith, the last living member of the Finch family, returning to the family's home after nearly a decade to learn the truth about the short lives and sudden deaths of all of other members of her family. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. Players will learn how each family member met their end by guiding Edith through each of their bedrooms, which have been sealed off for preservation after the death of the room's proprietor, and more or less rummaging through their belongings. Although this isn't the first time we've seen the return home and search the house for clues on the family structure, in my opinion, it's never been so well executed. I've truly enjoyed every walking simulator I've ever played to some extent, but they usually have a single crippling flaw, like the constant glitches in either one or the agonizingly slow movement in Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. These are both good games and I enjoyed them very much, but it's these shortcomings that cause what could have been amazing games to only be good ones. Thankfully, it seems the creators of Edith Finch heard the complaints of players of other walking simulators and made a conscious effort to avoid them, which in part makes this one of the best games of its kind that I've ever played. But what really makes this game so special is its unorthodox style of gameplay and storytelling. There are no puzzles to solve or items to collect. There's virtually no real challenge at all. It seems the developers decided to sacrifice these elements and focus more on delivering an amazing story, and it was a sacrifice well made. You'll spend a maximum of 30 minutes learning each family member's story, first by searching through their rooms while triggering bits of narrative, and then by playing a mini-game of sorts that takes you inside the characters' minds in the moments before their deaths. What's impressive is that, although your time learning about these characters is short-lived, the game succeeds in having the player develop a genuine emotional connection to each character, thus making their impending death that much more distressing. It's all so wonderfully devastating, and if I were asked to compare this game to a film, I would choose Tim Burton's 2003 cult classic Big Fish, in that it tells an incredibly sad tale in an incredibly happy way. Visually, the game does look amazing, but I can't say that it stands out among other walking simulators. It's become standard for games of this type to be visually stunning, so while everything from the textures in the floor to the sunlight beaming in through the kitchen window looks amazing, it all also feels kind of expected. The game does sound outstanding, however. Everything from flying a kite through a furniture littered gust of wind to packing peanuts crunching under Edith's feet sounds amazing. Speaking of amazing, every bedroom within the Finch house is and will remain locked, which means you have no choice but to enter them via an intricate web of secret passages. The complexity of the Finch house alone is testament that this game is a thorough work of art created by detail-oriented and highly ambitious individuals intent on leaving the players in awe.
The story of the Finch family is not an obscure one, and as I said before, the game doesn't offer much in the way of a challenge. It's a straightforward story that's both satisfying and emotionally exhausting, which is a good thing. It's a relatively short experience that I recommend playing through in a single sitting, alone and with minimal distractions. I honestly haven't been so moved by a game since my first playthrough of Journey, and I've been chasing that dragon for quite some time, so it's refreshing to be so emotionally stimulated by a game again. My biggest complaint is that there's no platinum trophy, but with the absence of puzzles and collectibles, I kind of understand that. What Remains of Edith Finch is an astounding, mature, profound, and generally well done experience that raises the bar for games of its kind and story driven games in general, and I am proud to have it in my collection. Thank you so much for watching my video, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.